In this video, we are going to do a new accuracy test on a much larger scale than what we've done before. If you've seen some of our other accuracy tests, it was done on a 26 inch scale bar, which was a good indication of a 3D scanner's accuracy in a small area. But we decided to step it up to do something larger to see what the real world accuracy would be on some of the scanners that we sell on something larger. So we built this rig, as you see here, and what we did was we included those scale bars so that we can use those as kind of a validation. And then we scanned all of the spheres that you see on this new rig we built. And these spheres are what are called hubs precision scan spheres. They are highly accurate spheres. And what they do is they mount in what's called an SMR nest. Uh, and what that is, is that is used with a laser tracker and a laser tracker SMR would drop into this nest. So if you use a 1.5 inch SMR with a laser tracker in this nest and then replace it with this hubs precision sphere, they both contain the same center point. Now, why is that important? Because we are gonna use an API laser tracker to track all of these nests. And that's gonna give us our base measurement to then use other 3D scanners to test their accuracy. Now, why would we use the laser tracker? because it is the most accurate measuring device out there, especially when you start getting into larger objects. So the first thing we're gonna do is laser track the spheres on the two scale bars. And you can see we have him pointed left to right uh, and then back, uh, you know, front to back with some elevation. Um, and we've got everything locked down as rigid as can be on our test rig so nothing moves around and we get good accurate measurements. So once we measure those scale bars, we take a look at those numbers and you can see what that looks like. So the one scale bar measures 25.39 and our laser tracker measurement you can see here for a difference of seven tenths of one thousandths. And then the second uh, scale bar you can see for a measurement of nine tenths of one thousandths. So both of those uh, measurements were less than a thousandths of an inch accuracy from the laser tracker. So that gives us a good idea of the starting point. And we know the accuracy of the laser tracker. And we're confident that all the measurements on this rig are going to be far below uh, a thousandths of an inch uh, when we take all the measurements. Now, if you take a look at this rig, you can see we've got some elevation going back to front, and then we've got about eight feet in length, and everything, again, is bolted down and rigid. Uh, the stand or the table itself is on three points on the floor. We're on a cement floor. It's a very heavy table. Everything is bolted down because we can't have any movement when we do the scanning if we want to try to hold the accuracy. Now, if you take a look, we've got 20 spheres on the table, plus the two measurements on the ball bars for a total of 22 measurements we're actually gonna take. And here are all the measurements we're gonna take. So we're gonna take the two ball bars plus 20 additional measurements. Now it's hard to read, but basically measuring uh, from this corner here all the way up to this corner, that's about 90 inches. Uh, you can see we're going across. Uh, we've got some measurements on the table measurements up. So we're really trying to get a good representation of 3D measurements in space in about an eight foot uh, area of length and about uh, three feet or so in depth with a couple feet of height. So trying to do a good job representing what a large real world uh, part may look like. All right, so the first scanner up in this test, we will do the Creaform HandyScan Black Elite. Now this scanner requires targets in its field of view. So you can see we've applied targets to the actual 
uh, testing rig, and we also just laid down some targeted bars and triangles just so it has enough in its field of view. And then we move around and scan all the hub's precision spheres. We're also going to scan those scale bar spheres, uh, again, just so we've got a baseline uh, of a you know known artifact of a known distance. So we just go around and scan all of the uh, balls, and then we'll extract the centers and take those same 20 measurements that we took with the laser tracker, and we will compare them to see what the results look like. Next up is the Creaform Go Scan Spark. Uh, now, this scanner is a little bit different than the HandyScan Black. This is a structured light scanner, uh, and it does not require targets for scanning. But if you want to try to get optimal accuracy, um, you really should use targets. So in this case, we are using targets, and we're telling it to use targets um, as it scans. So that will uh, always improve the accuracy because it allows it to lock down to those targets and you don't get any shifting or sliding uh, of the scan data as it acquires it and tries to position it. So once again, we just move around to scan the spheres. and We really need to get about a third of the sphere or more. Um, that'll allow us to accurately find the center point of the sphere. And again, then we're going to compare those measurements to our master API tracker file and look at the differences. The final Creaform scanner we're going to test is the Metriscan system. Now, the Metriscan system is different from both the HandyScan and the GoScan. And for any of these scanners, if you'd want to see a detailed demonstration, uh, we have separate videos that go into a lot of detail on all of these scanners. But the Metriscan system uses what's called a C-Track system, which is basically a camera system that tracks the head. You'll notice the targets are actually on the head. And you can run this system in what's called a static mode or a dynamic mode. Uh, the dynamic mode will actually use reference targets, and you see these larger targets on the rig. Um, it'll track those as long as, uh, as well as the targets on the head of the scanner. And again, we're not going to go into a lot of detail, but we did the accuracy test both in the static mode and in the dynamic mode and compared uh, the differences in running those uh, two modes. But again, we're just moving around, scanning all of the targets, all of the spheres, and getting the spheres uh, on the bars as well. So the next two scanners in the test are made by a company called Surfacer, and these type of scanners are called hemispherical scanners. So they work quite differently than the handheld systems from Creaform. These scanners basically uh, sit on a tripod and they spin around. Um, it actually spins in two directions. There's a, a mirror on a 45 degree angle uh, that spins around inside the housing and then the housing itself um, spins around and it basically projects out a, a single point, a single laser point, um, but it's doing millions of points per second as it's rotating around. And the first model here is called the 75HSX. And this is a ultra short range scanner. Um, it's good to about six feet out from the center of the scanner. So we actually tested this at a three foot standoff from the table and a five foot standoff from the table. And uh, we did the same thing. We uh, uh, scan the whole thing and again this one works different you basically tell it to scan and it'll do 360 by 270 degrees or you can window in on an area and tell it only to scan here uh, but we basically collected the scan data uh, and then found the center points and then compared that back to the uh, API tracker data so the last scanner in the test is the Surfacer 100 HSX IR model. And this is an intermediate range scanner. It has uh, a reach out to about uh, 70 feet. So it works just like the 75 HSX. Um, it's just meant for larger things. Now, we didn't actually do any uh, video uh, for the accuracy test, but you can see it here. Um, it works pretty much the same way. And for this one, we scanned at 5 feet, 10 feet, 15 feet, and 20 feet away from our table. 
uh, and collected all of that data just to see how, uh, see what kind of results we would get at some different ranges um, with this scanner. And again, we compared this back to the tracker data. So what are the results uh, for this test? Well, keep in mind, this is what we call a real world accuracy test. It's not a gauge r and &R in a very controlled environment. It's realistic numbers that you could expect out in the real world under real circumstances. And the numbers that we got from all of these scanners is actually very impressive. But if you list them all side by side, you will see differences, but you need to understand uh, that these scanners are all uh, at very different price points and have different applications in mind. Some are truly metrology grade. Others are meant more for like design and reverse engineering and things like that. Some are meant for smaller objects. Some are meant for larger objects. But if you'd like to see the results, we're happy to share them with you. Um, and you can reach out to us at the uh, number below or email uh, and uh, just contact us. And we're happy to share the results. Uh, but it usually uh, helps to have a conversation, understand what scanner you might be interested in looking at um, and putting it into context uh, with those results. But overall, the results were very impressive. And if you'd like to uh, receive a copy of the results, um, please reach out to us.